Hello guys and welcome to this video of the Xiaomi Yi Android mobile app. Unfortunately, I don't have an iOS device to hand, so I won't be able to go through the iOS version. However, the few differences between the two from what I've seen and read are purely cosmetic. So in this video, I'm not going to show you how to connect the camera to your Wi-Fi enabled phone or tablet, as the app comes with very clear instructions on how to do so. This video is intended for those of you who are looking to purchase this camera and want to have a better understanding of all of the features the app gives you. So with that out of the way, let's jump into the Android app. As you can see, I have a Bluetooth mouse connected to my OnePlus 2 mobile phone as a way for you guys to easily keep track on what I'm doing. So when you connect the camera to the app, you'll be met with this screen here. In the middle, you'll see the live viewfinder. Its smoothness really depends on how powerful your phone is and any background processes that may be running at the time. Under this, you can quickly see what mode the camera is currently in. Here it's showing that the camera is set to video. There's the times resolution next to that, the aspect ratio, and then the frame rate. To the right of this is the battery's percentage and battery status icon. Under here to the left is the ability to change some quick settings depending on what mode you're in. At the top here in video mode, we have the different resolutions available. Under this is the frame rate, which changes depending on the resolution that you've currently selected. Underneath that is the metering modes. We've got center, matrix, and spot. And lastly, we've got something called auto low light. Now I choose to have this disabled as it works in lowering the shutter speed in low light situations as a way of allowing the camera's sensor to pick up more light. This can sometimes result in very blurry video which I tend to avoid. I instead record with this feature off and try my best to bring back some of the details from the shadows in my editing software. At the bottom in the sensor you can see the shutter release button there or if you're in video mode the start and stop record button. To the right of this we've got the ability to change between your different video and different photo settings. So we're on normal video at the moment, next to this is something called short video. And what short video is, as you can see, it's a very low resolution 30p video that's limited to 10 seconds. What that's really intended is for you to quickly share videos to social media or to instant messaging like WhatsApp or Facebook Messenger. So there's no quick settings for that as you can see, it's just set as default to those low settings there. Lastly, we have video time lapse and video time lapse. The settings it allows you to change are the intervals. We've got 0.5 seconds, 1, 2, 5, 10, 30, and 60 seconds. Underneath that is the video length. So the video time lapse here, it will compile all of your images into a length of which you choose. So we've got the lengths here. We've got uh, off, which is unlimited. 6, 8, 10, 20, 30, 60 and 120 seconds. Underneath that we've got the resolutions available and the metering modes again. So now we'll move on to the photo options. The quick settings there for the normal photo options. We've got the resolution 16, 13, 12, 8 and 5 megapixel and again those three metering modes underneath. Next we've got the timer and the quick settings for that we've got a, a countdown of 3 seconds, 5, 10 and 15 seconds. We've got the different resolutions and metering modes options there again. We've got the picture time lapse, so you can again choose the shutter interval, the same shutter intervals as in the video time lapse. You've got the ability again to change the resolution and the metering modes. Lastly here we have the burst mode and the quick settings available for this is the ability to change from three pictures a second to five to seven or seven pictures over two seconds. You've got again the resolution and the same metering options. So that's it for the bottom half of this main screen. At the top here you can see the Wi-Fi SSID name of the camera. Underneath that you've got this camera icon which allows you to see this screen we're looking at right now. To the right of it you've got the ability to check the files that are currently on your SD card, so all of the different videos and pictures that you've taken. The top right here you can cycle between the SD card of the camera and what's been downloaded from the SD card on the camera to your mobile phone or your tablet. So these are a few pictures and videos that I've already downloaded to my OnePlus 2 device. Lastly we have what looks like a compass, so I'm assuming it's a navigation icon to some Xiaomi Yi videos and some tutorials, maybe some endorsed videos as well and an advertisement. To the top right, we've got these three dots here. This allows you to check what app version you're currently running. So with me, it's 2.1.1. The firmware for your camera, when there's an update available, will be found here. We've got an option to go to the manual, which you need to be connected to the internet for. And there's a Q&A and a feedback section, which again, you need to be connected to the internet for. Going back to the camera now, in the top right, we've got the advanced settings. Here you can see the advanced settings for the video. We can change the quality from high, normal to low. 
Underneath this, you've got the ability to have the timestamp off, just the date, just the time, or the date and time. Resolutions again, just like in the quick settings. The video standard is set to NTSC, but you can also select PAL. The metering modes again, just like in the quick settings. Moving on to the photo advanced settings, you've got again the different resolutions. You've got the default photo mode, so when you change over from the video mode to the photo mode, you can select what you want to be your default. It could either be the normal, the timer, the time lapse, or the burst mode. So all of the different four modes that we saw in the quick settings earlier. The default camera mode, it's a bit strange that it's amongst the list of the photo advanced settings, when not connected to the app. This basically, when you turn your camera on, you can choose to have it either default to the photo or video mode. Underneath this again is the timestamp with all the same settings as the video, but this time for photo. We have different camera settings, so the ability to have the preview on or off, that's just the viewfinder that we were looking at earlier. Auto low light, which we've been through, I've got that off. Loop recording, you've got the ability to enable or disable that. Lens distortion adjustment, which is quite a handy feature, which I have on most of the time. With these action cameras with their wide angle lenses, they can tend to have a lot of barrel distortion. So what this does, it helps to try and eliminate that by cropping in the image ever so slightly and trying to get rid of that barrel distortion with some software manipulation as well. Under this, you can have the Wi-Fi automatically switched on when the camera's turned on. The ability to enable and disable the AV output is here. Rotate the video, you can enable that if the camera's mounted upside down. So emergency backup, what this camera has is a G-Shock sensor and with the loop recording enabled, if the camera is subject to a high amount of G-Force in one go, i.e. a crash, the video that is currently recording in the loop mode will then be locked down to the memory card and this option enabled prevents it from being deleted. Under here we have the unpair Bluetooth remote, you can get a Bluetooth remote shutter release and uh, that's what the Bluetooth is used for, you can't use it for anything else. The buzzer volume, so you can change this from high to low to off. Wi-Fi settings, that's where you'll change the name of the Wi-Fi and also the password. The LED mode here, you can choose whether or not you want all the LEDs on, off, or if you only want the status LED, so to let you know whether or not it's in video or photo mode. The camera clock and date is found next. When you click that, you're asked if you want to sync it with your phone's time and date. Under this, we have the auto power off function, so you can choose a select time that you want the device to turn off after however many minutes of inactivity. Lastly, in this list, we have the model name, the serial number, the current firmware version of the camera, the SD card options, so it tells you here how many gigabytes you've got free, as well as the ability to format the SD card. Under this, you have a find camera option, and you have to obviously be connected to the camera to use this. When you click this icon down here, there's an audible repetitive beep, which the camera sounds off until you can locate it, maybe if you've misplaced it in your house somewhere. Lastly, you've got the ability to restore to factory settings. And if we go back out of that, at the top here, just next to the advanced settings icon, we've got the power option. If we select that, and then it asks you if you want to disconnect from the camera. Yes, I do. So there you have it. There's my in-depth overview of the Android app. Thank you for sticking around for this long. If you haven't done so already, check this link in the top right hand corner, it will be in the video description below as well. It's the full review of the Xiaomi Yi Action Camera that I did about a week and a half ago. It's also got some sample footage on there as well. Also, if you're into photography and are interested in entering a free competition, then be sure to check out my Facebook page for one that I've got currently running now until the end of the 20th of December. Full terms and conditions can be found on my page, where the link again is in the description below. The genre of this competition is all about the golden hour and the creative ways in which the light can be used. The prize I'll be giving away is a 60 by 30 centimeter print of my sunrise from Snowden photo, so be sure to check it out and get shooting. Thanks again, remember to subscribe if you like my content and I'll see you in the next one.